we would be connecting soon. So let us start with our second session. And uh, as you can see that Professor Farah Hassan would be chairing this session and uh, there would be two speakers only in this session. One, uh, uh, Professor David Lillewell and the uh, second, Su Dr. Sufia Siddiqui. So, okay, up you, she can tell me after that. Huh? Yeah. Wo, wo, nazar nahi so, uh, can you start your, uh, you have got around 25 minutes to speak, sir. Very good, I'll start. Right, sir. Yeah, please. So, thank you very much, uh, Professor Rutavi, uh, and thank you uh, for all of the uh, people there. I'm very sorry that I'm not there with you and I don't get to benefit from your uh, uh, I hope perhaps you can communicate them to me uh, later. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Okay. And uh, I, I want to thank uh, all the people at Onagar over the years who have helped me. And uh, uh, I particularly, for this paper, particularly indebted uh, to Professor Askar Abbas and Professor Iftikhar Alam Khan uh, for the wonderful work that they have done, that they have shared with me. Uh, over the years, um, and many other people uh, there. I see, uh, I see some faces uh, in, the, in the distance, but it's very awkward. I hope you can all hear me. Um, I'm going to be speaking about uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan's engagement over the course of his life with uh, uh, the rapid change of uh, technology, economy, and politics, uh, and its attempt to reconcile 19th century European uh, thought uh, with uh, his own educational background as a uh, scholar of uh, Islamic science and philosophy. Um, as you know, in 1869, Sayyid Ahmed Khan, uh, in one of the many turning points in his life, uh, uh, traveled to, to England uh, on the ship. And uh, there's a wonderful account uh, published a few years ago by uh, Professor Askar Abbas, uh, uh, which I recommend to you, of his uh, travels to England. Uh, he uh, is, it is characterized in the uh, early parts with wonderful curiosity and openness. Uh, to the people he meets and to the uh, new world he encounters. On the ship, he uh, uh, measures the longitude and the latitude of every stop along the way. He uh, takes up his, uh, 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 he, he describes in great uh, detail the workings of the steam engine, the uh, plumbing system of the ship, all the details uh, uh, which fascinated him. Um, and he was greatly pleased to meet people from different parts of India, different parts of the world, and of course, British uh, counterparts and fellow travelers who were on the ship. But one of the things that happened was one day he, uh, he was approached by a young lieutenant from the Indian Army um, who came up to him and said, uh, uh, I'm not a missionary, I'm only uh, a... Uh, uh, expert on gunnery and uh, surveying, but I want to talk to you about religion. And uh, what he said was that, uh, look, Christianity, and particularly the British, are obviously superior people because they have provided us wonderful ship that we're on, they've provided us uh, with the railway, with the telegraph, uh, and most of all, they have the strongest armies uh, and the uh, most advanced armaments in the world. Now, Sayyid Ahmed Khan uh, uh, did not accept that uh, argument, and, uh, but he was disturbed by it. And uh, it seems to me that that encounter uh, changed the focus of much of his uh, later trip. If he was interested in science, he became... Uh, his interest in religion came to the forefront of much of the time that he spent uh, in England. Now, we know that Christianity has long 
been used as a uh, justification uh, uh, for the British conquest, uh, the European, uh, and I should say Euro Euro-American uh, uh, domination of much of the world. Um, and in fact, uh, just now at Oxford University, uh, there is an enterprise uh, going on to uh, uh, renew the uh, Christian uh, motives for uh, 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 European domination, Euro-American domination. Um, but it seems to me that uh, only in the 19th century was this linked up with technology. And uh, Sayyid Amir Khan, um, uh, up to that point, up to the point of his trip, his interest in science, which was very considerable, and his interest in religion, which, were very, uh, which was very considerable, largely ran on separate tracks. And it was only afterwards, uh, after this trip, that he attempts to put the two uh, together. Um, in uh, his interest in religion appears, uh, he seems to have been involved as a very young man in, uh, to some extent in the uh, disputations that took place in Agra in the 1840s, but we really see it in the pamphlets that he wrote after the 1857 rebellion, uh, which are uh, uh, particularly Asbadi, Bhagavad Hind, where he uh, 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 refers to Christian scripture and the need for love and friendship uh, as a way of reconciling uh, Indians and particularly Muslims uh, 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 with uh, uh, British rule. Um, he, in uh, 1862, he begins to write a uh, uh, commentary on the uh, Holy Bible. Uh, and in the first part of that commentary, public 18, does not refer to science at all, and uh, looks uh, entirely at scriptural sources, comparing the Bible and, and the Quran, uh, arguing uh, uh, from the texts themselves. Um, in 1863, a second part of the Bible uh, comes up, and in that, he begins to refer to some scientific issues, but he associates himself with a certain contemporary British uh, uh, theologian who casts skepticism on uh, uh, current scientific uh, arguments. For example, in that book, he uh, uh, accepts the uh, story of Adam and the flood and so on as literal truth. He has a chronological table which argues that the world was uh, 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 created 4,000 years, 4,000 BC, um, and uh, he takes that all as factual, based entirely on scripture, uh, mostly biblical uh, sources. Um, he does, however, say that we don't really know what a day meant or what night and day meant uh, before the timing of uh, uh, modern times. And we do now know, he says, that in fact the uh, uh, earth goes around the sun, the sun doesn't go around the earth. Um, we know that. Earlier he had thought a lot. Um, and, uh, uh, but people have to uh, uh, be presented with truth according to their understandings at the time. And so he explains that as a matter of the development of, uh, uh, of human knowledge and human progress over time. And that opens the door for his later thoughts on uh, this subject. Not, notwithstanding this gesture uh, to the progress of learning and science, as he puts it, Said Ahmed Khan's uh, interest in science and technology before his trip to Europe had been, to a large extent, a separate matter. His uh, maternal grandfather, Khadja Farid Ibn Ahmed, uh, was uh, a con uh, considerably interested in science and had traveled to Lucknow, as uh, you know, in the late 18th century, uh, to study with Tafazul Hussein Khan, who is said to have uh, translated Newton uh, into Persian. I don't know if that 
translation ever uh, has been found. Um, and uh, Khaja Farid's son, uh, uh, Khaja Zainuddin, uh, manufactured his own instruments for uh, mostly astronomical uh, observation. Uh, this is part of uh, Sayyid Aga Khan's uh, background. Uh, and he took that up by publishing uh, editions and translations of his grandfather and other works on mechanics, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, mechanical co uh, compass, the proportional compass. Uh, these are some of his earliest, uh, earliest uh, uh, works. So there was a considerable interest in mathematics and in science, not necessarily for a very utilitarian purpose, uh, but uh, just out of fascination. Um, one of Sayyid Khan, Alan Khan's uh, responses to the 1850, uh, uh, 57 rebellion was his effort to bring the advancement of contemporary science and technology to a North in, uh, Indian Urdu language public. And uh, in, as, in 1864, he founded for Azipur and then shifted the Scientific Society, which uh, uh, not only uh, published uh, 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 translations of scientific works uh, of all sorts, but also uh, uh, conducted experiments, uh, uh, ex uh, introduced new technology, new seeds, new uh, the use of the uh, uh, new invention of the uh, tube well. Um, uh, this was one of this was the enterprise scientific society, and this was an entirely secular operation, including Hindus and British uh, 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 fellow workers in in this enterprise, uh, as well as Hindu uh, Hindu friends. Um, uh, this was the work of the Fix Society. Uh, during that time, and uh, there were lectures on uh, natural science that were given at the uh, at the Scientific Societies Institute. Um, when he went to England, um, one of the things he had to do was pass through Egypt, and he was his travel out uh, was through the Suez Canal, a major transformation in human geography. Um, and uh, uh, at the, on, the, on the ship uh, across the Mediterranean, he met the Lesseps himself, the man who uh, uh, was the chief uh, entrepreneur who uh, uh, was responsible for the Suez Canal. And he thought of this as a great uh, uh, human intervention in the uh, 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 travel and technology. Uh, he couldn't speak very much to Ferdinand uh, Lesseps, who had a little bit of Arabic, so, but they sat next to each other. They were, sat writing at the same writing table. And uh, he was very much taken up with this man who embodied for him the progress of humanity. Um, for all his excitement about technology, uh, Sayadam had turned the greater part of his attention during his time in London uh, to refuting a evangelically uh, inspired uh, critique of Islam by the Lieutenant Governor of uh, the Northwestern Provinces, uh, Sir William Muir, who in fact had been the major patron of his of his trip. Um, we don't really know if that was his initial intention. His later uh, biographers and he himself said it was, but in his earlier uh, statements about why he was going. He was going to study schools and sciences and technology and factories in uh, Britain, and he did that to some extent, but mostly he spent his time uh, poring over texts to uh, uh, write a refutation of Muir, and that refutation, the es Essays of the Life of Muhammad, which came out in both Urdu and English uh, uh, that very year, um, is not based on scientific thought, but it but refers constantly to the concept of natural law. And one should say that Muir himself had no interest in science whatsoever and seemed to be untouched by the uh, Enlightenment uh, thought. Um, 
One can say that uh, truth for Sayyid Amir Khan was a matter of affiliation with authority. In the first part of his commentary on the Bible, he maintained that m knowledge must depend on the authority of the transmitters of that knowledge, the chain of authorities, the Asnad. Um, and he gives himself as the uh, example uh, by giving his own Isnad uh, back to the Prophet Muhammad, going down to his teachers and his, uh, um, uh, all the way to Shambhaluna. Uh, what he came to believe, however, is that knowledge develops over time and established ideas in the past may have been superseded but ideas uh, considered authoritative now may well be overridden in the future. The criteria for choosing, however, remained unclear, deciding who to believe, but also to what extent one can exercise one's own independent investigation. In any case, the choice could not be between Muhammad and Newton, let alone between Darwin and oneself, since Muhammad, by definition, according to Sayyid Amir Khan, uh, 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 through the Quran and through at least some of the hadith that uh, he accepted, transmitted the source of all knowledge of God. If there is something in the Quran that may seem to us, he said, uh, co contradicting truth or reality, there are two explanations. Either we have made an error in understanding meaning of these verses, or we are mistaken in our understanding of what is truth and reality. The task was to discover new ways to read the revealed truth in the light of the progress of science. And this is what he attempted uh, to do in his later works, to try to reconcile uh, uh, the tradition of Islamicate thought particularly rationalist Islamicate thought, uh, with modern science, as best as he could understand it. And one should remember that Sayyid Amin Khan had only a, a, a distant knowledge of contemporary science. He did not know English, as he cont uh, continually reminds us, and he, his knowledge of science had to be communicated him orally or in written form through translations. Um, in, uh, I'll have to skip. Uh, he started to use the English word nature uh, in his uh, biblical uh, commentary, but it becomes more and more uh, common, the translation of fitrat or kudrat. Uh, to be, uh, to, uh, these are all words that, that, that are used for nature, but more and more he uses uh, the English word. And this word becomes attached to him by his critics as a, uh, uh, as a way of making fun of him or at least distancing themselves from him. And the first uh, critic who seems to have done that was Ali Baksh who said he wasn't against the establishment of the MLO College at Oliver. Uh, he was just against uh, what he called the uh, Sir Syed's Milati Nacharya, his, uh, his uh, uh, nation of, nat of naturalists, if you like. Um, in the final decades of his life, Syed Amir Khan himself embraced the term uh, Nacharya. Um, uh, but it had uh, often been used as in the cartoon in the, of a punch as a way of making fun and satirizing uh, uh, Sayyid Amir Khan. Um, uh, Sayyid Amir claimed to ground his understanding of nature in what he understood to be modern sciences, within the Jadida. But they served to buttress religious authority in much the same way that earlier Muslim scholars had studied stars, animals, plants, and the human body. What's interesting, however, is that when this uh, Tazim al-Akhlaq came out, there's very little science in it. Unlike the earlier editions of the Oligar Institute, which was 
were full of reports of new chemical, uh, new findings in chemistry, of earthquakes, of uh, canal construction, all of that. That doesn't appear in Tessie de la Fra. There, there almost no science except uh, passing remarks in his presentation of his commentary on the Quran. Um, according, his commentary on the Quran, uh, which many people take as very radical, uh, is radical because he, uh, he emphasizes that the Quran is completely consistent with science. Uh, and he, he declares that over and over again. And there's nothing, and he uses the English word supernatural uh, in the Quran. There are no miracles uh, in the Quran. And anything that seems that way, just uh, uh, figures of speech or to be understood in, uh, by example, the idioms of uh, the uh, of Arabic in the time that it was written. Um, and he gives us examples of uh, his discussion of uh, uh, Yusuf, who uh, uh, was able to interpret dreams not because he had some supernatural powers, he had just a certain talent for it, a malaka, uh, for interpreting dreams, and he uh, was able to predict the uh, famine and uh, uh, plenty in, the, in Egypt because he understood the uh, flood patterns of the Nile. Um, in other words, uh, his uh, ability to interpret dreams was a matter of, um, uh, of uh, uh, not supernatural powers, but entirely to be understood in terms of science. Um, What we do find, however, in Tezi Bilakhla is discussion of nature not so much as science, but as poetry. So Sayyid Ahmed Khan writes about the beauties of nature and the feelings one has uh, in response to nature, uh, uh, to the uh, changes of the season and, the, uh, and so on. This is what he uh, discusses in his essays in Tezi Bilakhla nature. Um, he, as you know, he uh, commissions uh, Al-Taf Hussein Hali to write natural shayari, uh, which uh, does much the same, uh, uh, to des describe the beauties of nature. Um, and insofar as uh, uh, Hali was influenced by the romantic uh, poets of, uh, of England, and that's a very indirect uh, influence. These are hardly defenders of modern science. These were people who were critics of modern science. J Javed uh, Majid has pointed out that Holly never actually uh, mentioned Wordsworth. Uh, the uh, 19th century. In technological uh, uh, particularly the building of the canals, technological changes associated with British rule and British power. Uh, what the British were doing were building canals, uh, presume, uh, and there is a difference, one should say, between technology and science uh, that uh, we don't have time to discuss here, but to say this was um, not so much a manifestation of the European Enlightenment as an exercise in wealth and brute power. Um, the task for Muslims was to participate in, the, in these transformations. Uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan's critics latched on to this to say that he was a materialist. And most famously, uh, Sayyid Jamaluddin al Afghani attacked Sayyid uh, Ahmed Khan, or Ahmed Khan, he didn't get used, he dropped the word Sayyid, uh, uh, for a uh, hover around the English, I'm quoting here, in order to obtain some advantage from them. He called openly for the abandonment of all religions and cried, Nature, nature, in order to convince people that Europe had uh, only progressed in civilization, advanced in science and industry. Um, 
and he uh, referred to uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan's ideas as the Mazhab bin Najri. But in fact, there's no evidence that al Afghani ever read anything that Sayyid Ahmed Khan um, actually wrote, and there's no evidence that Sayyid Ahmed Khan read what al Afghani wrote. Um, so their uh, relationship to each other uh, is uh, something that later on appears, uh, one could say. Uh, and in fact, when one looks at their ideas about science, uh, uh, they're very similar. Uh, what uh, really uh, they differ on is uh, politics and uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan's uh, uh, belief that British rule was to the advantage of India and of Muslims, and of course, uh, al Afghani's opposition to that and his belief that Muslims must mobilize themselves worldwide uh, to combat European imperialism. Uh, what Sayyid Ahmed Khan does establish, uh, contrary to the lieutenant on the ship, uh, was that uh, uh, Muslims, as much as uh, Christians or anybody else, had as much uh, right and access to science as anybody else. There was no uh, religious barrier, uh, as he saw it, to the pursuit of science. We must not forget, Muhammad Iqbal said a generation later, that what is called science is not a systematic view of reality. It is a mass of sectional views of reality, fragments of a total experience that we do not fit together. In fact, the various natural sciences are like so many vultures falling on the dead body of nature and each running away with a piece of its flesh. What Sayyid Ahmed Khan uh, does is, according to Javed Majid, uh, quite persuasively, is show a kind of ambivalent attitude that is expressed in Iqbal's uh, statement about science and progress. So there is within him this uh, romantic notion of nature. There is a nostalgia for the past, uh, the, the uh, uh, past of uh, the Quran and the Prophet. Muhammad and also of uh, the, the great figures of uh, Islamic uh, philosophy and, uh, uh, and science. Uh, as much as there is a, uh, a role for uh, contemporary science and for British rule. Mixture and confusion of ideas about religion, science, and history express a profound ambivalence, Javed Majid says about modernity and a good deal of nostalgia for an ideal past. But ambivalent skeptic's downright rejection of modernity was hardly limited to Muslims, but was widely shared in Europe itself, and perhaps mostly in India by Muhammad Gandhi. From the more recent uh, perspective of a world on the brink of nuclear war and induced climate degradation, or worse, Victorian optimism with respect to the onward march of uh, and prosperity looked a lot less attractive. Still, there is much to be said for Sutman's commitment to evidence and open-minded reason in the service of humanity and what he called me. Now that we have reached this point, it is only through more and better science and a wider concept of the universal that human history has any future at all. Thank you. Uh, we had met a long time back when I was a young, youthful research scholar. I don't know if you have any recollection of that. Uh, thank you very much for the scooter and to, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. over to you remember Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that fascinating presentation. Uh, very enlightening, very informative, and, and I kind of like the historicist orientation in your presentation. You know, the, the, the need to look at shifts in discourse, the shifts in positions that Sasriya takes in his engagement with issues of science and technology. Uh, but I um, was confused about one issue, and I would like you to respond on that. Uh, I mean, 
Were there, uh, when we refer to Sir Sayyid's perception of science and technology, we have a view of science that is derived exclusively from the post-enlightenment tradition. Were there other sources of scientific knowledge emerging from the indigenous society, from cosmopolitan Islamic traditions, or from cosmopolitan intellectual traditions in the Islamic world, that may have also played a role a role in shaping his views on science and scientific thought. Exactly. I think, uh, 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 in my paper, I, I say that. Uh, it seems to me that Saddam Khan was much more familiar with uh, actual traditions of uh, the rationalist. Uh, uh, he was, in some sense, uh, uh, reviving them, but also uh, carrying them uh, forward of the uh, great scientific traditions of uh, Islam. And that was my uh, uh, references to his grandfather and his uncle uh, uh, was, uh, shows that. But that's what appears if you read the tafsir and you see who he's citing. For example, in the uh, uh, discussion of the Surah Yusuf, um, he, he starts off by saying, oh, there's modern psychology, and we now understand the nervous system, and so on. But then he immediately moves to Arazi, and he moves to uh, 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 Valura uh, to uh, discuss the meaning of dreams. That's what he really knew. His idea of what the procedures and uh, of modern science, the experiment. He knew that they were there. He writes about, about them, but he knew them at a distance. Uh, to some extent, the scientific society participated uh, in, in that, but he, he was not familiar. He did not write uh, extensively about what modern science was. And one should say, I, I, I mentioned that Tazibur Akhlaq um, really is void of science. Um, what's also true is that the MAO college was void of science. Uh, it was not in the curriculum um, uh, until after Syed Ahmed Khan's uh, death. There was mathematics, uh, but uh, 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 although the original scheme was to have laboratories and all of that, they were not there. Uh, so uh, Saleh Ahmed Khan was very much rooted in the past and very much attempting to, in some way, show that that past was relevant and making the point, which Allah also makes and others make, that uh, European science built on the classical traditions of the ancient world, carried forth and maintained and developed uh, by uh, is Islamic uh, scholars and uh, thinkers. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lelywell. We're actually short of time. I've been asked by the organizer of the conference to release you now and bid goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that.